uh, consent. Consent calendar. All items are considered routine or implemented on an earlier council action and may be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless requested. So first, if I could ask uh, um, from uh, our, our folks if there are um, any items that they want to pull for a separate vote. Separate vote. Uh, uh, Councilmember Medina, then Councilmember Mason. Councilmember Mason, go for it. Well, M Councilmember Medina, you can go ahead. Uh, please. Chris. Wait, wait. I, now, first, let's just make sure we got it because I know there's one we want to comment on the uh, bike and pad. But Councilmember Medina, you you had an item, and your hand is out sure. both ways, virtual and 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 uh, physically. Sure, sure, no, no problem. Um, I did want to pull five F for a discussion. Okay. Um, so it could be separate vote. Votes. That would be fine. You you want a separate vote or just discussion? Uh, discussion. Got it. Okay. Anything and for a separate could, vote? Well, for discussion, um, let's just say for a separate vote. Okay. For F or for another item? For F. Okay. F separate, separate vote. vote. You got and, it. And uh, you. Uh, predicted 5J would be for acknowledgement. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Mason. Yeah, so 5E for discussion and also 5F for a separate vote. F is already for a separate vote, so E is the one added for a uh, comment or a question. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Davis. I was going to ditto both those comments, so I'm glad Marty pulled it for a separate vote. Okay, anything else? Okay, with that, uh, let's go into uh, the ones for discussion. We're going to go on to consent calendar item E, and that is adopt resolution approving various curb marking changes. And what would be helpful, uh, Council Member Mason, is if it could be, are you talking about all of them or if there are specific ones? Uh, and then I'll go to Council Member Medina to see or uh, Councilmember Davis to see if there's others too. Yeah, it's actually uh, more of a process question that okay. I had uh, that, um, yeah, so I was hoping that the director may be able to answer. Um, this is, I, I think that this has come up a couple of times now where people have asked for traffic calming measures in some way or the other, and we've talked about the process going to the Traffic and Safety Committee. Um, and so, for example, one of the requests was made, uh, it looks like on August 7, 2019, and we're now about 13 or 14 months later. Another request was just made in the last couple of months. So I think for myself and for the public who's watching and other council members who may be interested, how, how is this determined, um, kind of what the process is from initiation to fruition on a vote? And then the second part of the question is the TJKM study that was completed in 2018. Um, is that balanced with requests made by the public during public comment at the Traffic and Safety Committee to determine which one is a, a priority? Hello. Good evening. Um, anyone? Yes, please. Anyone, Richie, City Engineer. Um, I can try to answer that. So we did um, have a traffic engineer who completed or helped to complete the uh, TJKM study. And so they were monitoring that and, and pulling items. Um, some of the items would need additional study. And so you could take additional funding or, um, you know, take some time to in order to do to form those studies. So those take a little bit longer. And um, I think there was some balance tried to achieve in, you know, trying to um, somewhat to respond to resident concerns while at the same time, um, you know, working on those longer term items. And so um, I know the TJCAM, we are reviewing that again. Unfortunately, we did have some staff turn turnover. And so, um, you know, the, the more experienced traffic engineer that was working on at the time, unfortunately was not here to, you know, really respond specifically when they are here. Um, but I know that they were monitoring the list. And I think one of the key items that went to, um, went before staff for traffic calming um, that did recently go to TSPC just to clarify and 
um, now that that has gone before them and we have a little bit more clarity on how to address those, we are preparing a petition form as well as um, a brochure to be available to the public. And you know, our next steps for that is to reach out to those who have contacted us. And so you know, we are trying to make progress on that. Okay, great. And then how, how is, no, oh, sure didn't, okay. You're good. And then the second question, um, how is it determined uh, between the two, which one is a, is a priority? Is it just what you just said a minute ago where you just have to look at each one individually or? It is. Um, some of it may be just be determined on our timeline for the studies and when it's available and we're able to prepare the staff report. And, um, you know, we also try not to overload a single uh, meeting with you know, many items and not have any, you know, another meeting. And so we do try to also um, spread out the items so that, you know, they're approximately equal. Okay. And one final question um, to the mayor, if it's okay. Please. Okay. Thanks. Um, the, one of the, one of the proposals is for, I believe the apartments near Crestmore and in the staff report, which I don't have right in front of me, but it referred to four collisions that were not specifically identified or directly uh, related to that particular um, gray area that's going to be red stripe. Um, I'm just concerned because the parking is really bad over there as it is. And so the recommendation that's been given, um, I guess I'd like to hear more from you. I, I did hear that the, I mean, I did read that the owners would like the location to be red. I'm curious to know if there was any outreach made to the tenants or the residents there because parking is just so hard to find in that area as it is. Right. And so um, the actual determination was to, um, so they had actually requested more red curb um, to be applied and in, in um, doing the evaluation of the collisions and not being related to this parking zone, um, the decision actually, and the recommendation was to actually allow the parking to resume. Um, and so uh, more parking would actually be allowed than had originally been um, requested by the apartment. Um, and so I think that the parking was really uh, a consideration and was really valued with all the facts that were before us. Okay, very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilmember Medina. Do you have any questions on this one? Um, not this one. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, Council Member Davis, did you? I did. Um, so I'm really kind of concerned about the red curb removal at Rosewood Drive in Glenbrook Lane. And I guess it's really the process. And I was in, a council member back in 2016, and I'm sure that um, council members that are here today might have a little bit more information. But, you know, it sounds like from what I'm understanding is a group of residents came to the um, committee kind of saying, hey, we want this area red and paint these curbs, and it sounded like we got no oppositions, and so go ahead and let's paint red. And kind of since, so, since then, things have changed. And I always get concerned when there's a few residents who want to change something, because I look at that intersection, and there's so many more just like it in San Bruno. And I, you know, grew up in the neighborhood, so I know it very well, walked by it a number of times, had friends that lived in that court. Um, it's not really a dangerous intersection. I can't remember accidents even in that area. Um, but I was honestly shocked when I saw the red curbing. I mean, it literally is crazy amount of red curbing and just really takes away all parking in front of somebody's home on a corner and even a little bit on a side street. And so I'm happy to see it be removed. Um, and so I, I just say that, you know, moving forward that we all need to think about when you make a decision, um, are we doing that for the rest of the city like that? And if so, this would be just crazy red curb striping. So I, I think that, that what was done back in 2016, I think in hindsight, we should really think about that moving forward. And then secondly, um, I, I happened to be uh, participated in that meeting. Um, and the, the committee, the TSP, came up with an idea of putting a yield sign. And again, I asked, well, gee, there's other yield sign, or there's other intersections without yield signs. It was not the recommendation by the um, consultants. So now I wonder why we're actually putting in a yield sign. Um, you know, the person leaving Glenbrook Court should really be the one who's going to proceed with caution and not really come out into the um, Rosewood Drive um, unless it's clear. 
So again, I just I, I I think it's something that I would again not recommend going forward with something where, you know, are we doing yield signs every time there's a side intersection that's coming into another street? Because we don't have that. I mean, there's some areas in town we do have it, but we don't have it consistently. So I would be careful with adding something. And and the other thing I really didn't like, and it was actually mentioned by a resident, is that it wasn't the recommendation from the consultant, but then you know, some, one of the members of the committee said, oh, I think we should, we should add this. And then everybody, oh, okay, that sounds great, but I'm not familiar with that intersection. So yeah, that sounds good. So I'm actually pretty concerned how it actually kind of came down and, and how that was determined. So those are my comments. Does staff wish to have any comment to the council member Davis? Um, yes, I would. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily here for the original um, establishment of the red zone, but I think you're correct in hindsight um and i think also what has changed is um our, the what we look at in terms of um, the site distance and so we can apply you know more engineering judgment uh, in that respect and so i think we would be more um, I think cautious moving forward and you know i think we're all uh, learning our lessons as well and so um you know i think all of this information is good and we'll carry Will be carried, and I know that um, that has been expressed by the TSBC as well as to look at it um, more completely. And, and I appreciate that, and I think it's not just for staff, but also for council members and those listening who want to become a council member. That you know, we really need to think before we kind of make these decisions on these one-off situations. So, you know, if you if you approve it here, do we apply that same theory throughout San Bruno? So, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, was there anything else from uh, others on this item, item E? Okay, let's go on to item J, which is accept resignation from Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee member effective November 6, 2020, as the city clerk post a notice of vacancy in accordance with state law. And Marty and, and a couple of us are bringing it up, and obviously others can comment, but it is uh, uh, Mr. Walter Bird who is just shall we say, one who has always been an advocate, very passionate, going into the schools when was allowed, right? The bike to work, all of those things. Um, he, he truly has uh, uh, been a very, very active member of this body. We want to thank him. Councilmember Medina? No, uh, Mr. Mayor, you're absolutely right. Um, 18, and a, 18 and a half years serving on that uh, committee, a avid bicyclist. Um, I can share with you that I once was the council liaison, staff liaison to the bike pedestrian committee and, and it was Walter there and, and his passion for bike riding and safety um, has always been incredible. So um, uh, a thank you for his service and, and uh, uh, well done, sir. Thank you. So as far as for items for discussion, those are the ones I had listed. Um, I would then entertain action to approve all items on consent with the exception of item F. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded uh, to approve all items except F. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Mason? Aye. Councilmember Medina? Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar? Aye. Mayor Medina? Aye. Now we'll go uh, to the pooled item, item F, adopt resolution establishing a permit parking zone on a portion of the 200 block of Huntington Avenue for city employee parking. And Council Member Medina? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I pulled this item because I'm concerned about the impact to the residents um, that live on Huntington north of the um, parking permit zone uh, near the corporation yard. Um, I spoke with the resident today. Um, they um, and I heard that not only is there numerous cars that park that are probably not from the neighborhood that are they believe they're contractors that leave their large vehicles there and um, 
recently street sweeping was added to that section on Huntington. Um, and uh, I have a number of questions. Um, and we all know that parking is very difficult in numerous areas. It's even worse now with more people um, working at home. It was getting a little bit better, but uh, it looks like we're gonna slide back. And um, so I'd like to hear um, a little more about the need for it. How many parking spaces are we trying to open up? How many um, employees arrive at that time? How many employees are working at the courtyard? Um, and um, I guess we'll go from there and then uh, I have some other questions after I hear uh, those answers. Yeah, so council member's kind of asking for kind of an overview and when some more specifics as he identified. Uh, would that be uh, Director Tan or uh, City Manager Grog? Uh, City Manager first and then uh, Director. Sure, why don't I intro this item, but I've asked Director Tan uh, for our Public Works Department to give more of a um, comprehensive presentation of what this item is, um, given that uh, there's a significant breadth of questions that have been asked by Council Member Marty Medina. I will say that this um, is an important uh, recommendation from the city. We do have 40 employees uh, that work Monday through Friday at the courtyard, and they are currently and have been for quite some time impacting the neighborhood uh, with their employee parking. Um, we do not have the space at our courtyard for uh, on-site employee parking, nor the money to construct a parking facility. And so this recommendation uh, was put forward actually quite some time ago, but was put on hold internally until we uh, develop and establish our residential parking permit program, because we wanted to make sure before we went forward with establishing a, permit, a parking zone for city staff, we wanted to make sure that we had a program out there with a process that should any community in this community would want a residential parking permit process, there, there's uh, a way to do that. And so we have not had any applications uh, for this neighborhood. And so with that introduction, why don't I have Director Chan give a, an overview of this project? Sure. Uh, thank you, um, City Manager. I have a presentation here that I put together here that I can share with you. So as, as you're aware, you know, the topic is related to the establishment of a parking zone on, on a portion of 200 block of Huntington Avenue for city employee parking. The recommendation is as follows, is to adopt the resolution establishing a parking permit zone on a portion of 200 block of Huntington Avenue for the city employees. The agenda uh, for the presentation is as follows, I'll provide a um, a brief overview or background of the project, uh, share the location map of the area, provide information on a proposed um, permit parking zone, and then discuss the fiscal impact and alternatives, and lastly, the, uh, the staff's uh, recommendations. So just a brief uh, background here. You know, the city's Public Works Corporation Yard is located at the, um, the corner of San Felipe and uh, Huntington Avenue. That's at 225 um, Huntington Avenue, and it houses the various maintenance divisions, uh, water, wastewater, streets, uh, storm, and garage. Um, currently, the yard lacks a dedicated parking lot, uh, similar to what the city manager mentioned, uh, for employees, and many of our staff are parking in the surrounding the residential neighborhoods. So to reduce the need for city spa staff to park in the residential neighborhoods, staff is proposing to create a uh, permanent parking zone on Huntington Avenue adjacent to the corporation yard. Uh, and this item was, oops, sorry, uh, was originally, um, you know, presented uh, to the, uh, the city's uh, traffic uh, safety and parking committee, um, otherwise known as TSBC, on June 5th, um, 2019. However, during the time, TSBC staff deferred making a recommendation and requested the item be brought back when the, uh, the citywide residential perfect parking program was established. Um, the RPPP was approved by City Council on August 27th, uh, 2019. And staff recently brought the item back to GSBC for their review and recommendation on November 4th um, last month, or, or, or 
actually earlier this month, and the TSPC members vote, voted unanimous, unanimously uh, to approve the permanent parking zone, but with the caveat that staff evaluate the turning uh, movement at the intersection to ensure that it wouldn't uh, be uh, affected by the proposed removal of the median and the, the island there. So uh, the, the item is being brought for, to council for final approval uh, tonight. So this slide shows the location map uh, at the, uh, the northwest corner of the intersection of San Felipe and uh, Huntington Avenue is the location of the Public Works Corporation yard. And the proposed permit parking zone is located from the intersection towards the northerly direction um, along Huntington Avenue. And the slide uh, shows the intersection, uh, again, looking north. And the corporation yards to your left there at the corner. And the project scope will remove the curb striping adjacent to the parking um, adjacent to the building, as well as the center median that's noted there, and, and then the stop sign. Uh, this will create additional parking spaces adjacent to the building, and also across the building where it's currently marked red, um, and um, to allow for two-way uh, vehicle traffic. And the red curbs will also be removed for um, these new parking spaces as well. And all of this work will be completed as part of the Avenues 1-3 sewer and water replacement project since the project will be paved the entire roadway and then recycling will be done as part of that work as well. And this slide shows the location of the proposed permit parking zone. It's on the west side, which is the side where the corporation yard is located. The proposed parking zone is from the intersection to north to the end of the, to the north end of the yard uh, building. And on the uh, opposite side, um, the east side of Huntington Avenue, the proposed parking zone will be from the intersection to a point about maybe 200 feet north of the intersection. So this will create approximately 40 parking spaces for employees. Uh, since the work hours are from 7 a.m. to approximately 3.30 p.m. on weekdays, uh, staff is proposing the hours of permit be uh, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, this will allow some of the staff who perform street sweeping activities to be able to use the space when they arrive before uh, 7 a.m. And the proposed and the work and normal work hours within the, you know, the, uh, the for the staff is from 7 uh, a.m. to 3:30 p.m. As, as I mentioned earlier, so the, the zone will benefit both the employees and, and the city, um, uh, and then the, the city's resident because employees will be able to park you know, adjacent to a corporation yard near the homes, you know, um, during the day. But outside these uh, permit hours, you know, residents will be able to use the spaces to park their vehicles you know, after you know, 4 p.m. And um, staff has also heard from uh, concerns about you know, vehicles parking within the uh, areas for a long period of time. And this implementation of this parking permit zone will resolve that issue uh, as well, which will allow you know, requests or which will um, have all those vehicles to be moved you know, um, on a um, more of a repetitive basis here. So the cost here is um, about $3,300 for, this will pay for the, uh, the staff's time to install new signs. Uh, staff is not requesting any additional appropriation at this time since you know, the street's operating budget has, some, has the available funds to cover the costs. And then for the alternative, you know, there are two. Um, the first, you know, the city council should choose to establish a park, the, the parking permit zone of a different size or two to uh, not approve the, the zone um, for the, uh, the Public Works Corporation yard employees. So staff is you know, recommending to adopt the resolution to establish a uh, permit parking zone on this 200 block for the city employees. And that's the end of my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any additional questions. And then we also have our um, deputy director here um, you know, that can provide additional information on what the staff is dealing with at the corporation yard in terms of parking. Councilman Medina, a follow up question? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so there's 40, 40 additional spaces that are, are going to be um, added um, in this zone. Um, how much um, effort? has been made or how, many, how much contact has been made with the residents that are going to be impacted the most uh, there north of this area? So my understanding is that the uh, the residents were contacted um, when we first previously went to TSBC, um, you know, and then additionally they were contacted again or they were sent notices for the recent TSBC meeting on earlier on uh, November 4th. So, you know, they've, they've been made aware of, you know, twice of the, the city's interest to create the, uh, the permit parking zone in this area. 
got it. And, and um, I served with the mayor on on the on the uh, subcommittee that worked on the residential parking permit program, and and in those meetings, we 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 understood that when you start one area of permitted parking and take away some of that parking, that you kind of push that problem into other areas. And, and that's the primary concern that I'm having for those um, 12 residences that are north of the parking permit program, um, of that parking zone. Um, was there any thought put, in, put into um, just extending the, the zone and allowing those residents to park um, in that zone as well? To residents to park during the uh, the daytime with the permit parking, or right. So there's if on the west side of Huntington to the end of that block, there there are approximately 15 parking spaces, and the concern is if you're taking away half the parking on that street right adjacent to those homes, other cars are just going to squish onto the other side of the street and just kind of. The problem is going to remain. It's just going to move over, right? And so, if there was any consideration to allow those residents to to have access to the, the parking solely in that zone by allowing um, giving them a permit to park on the west side, I'm trying to find a win-win here because what's going to happen is the parking on the west side of Huntington is going to be taken up by the cars that used to park on the, the east side. And when when street sweeping occurs, there's no place to park if you don't have a permit because you can't park in front of on that street. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm anticipating the, 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 um, the problem that's going to arise when, when we do this. And I'm um, just trying to find another way to avoid it. Yeah, I can see that. I don't you know. Staff hasn't looked into that. You know, um, additional extension of the uh, the spaces that you know, you're actually um, referring to, and that's something that we can take a look at um, on our end for additional evaluation as well. But I don't know, Haywan, do you have anything to add on that? Um, I do. Um, the residential portion, we do, um, you know, have a process to establish a residential parking zone, and we want to make sure that it's something that the residents want um, because for one reason or another they may not feel that it's something that they want to pursue and so I think before we establish a new zone we definitely want to um, engage with the public and make sure it's something that they want before we you know tell them this is how it's going to be um, there's definitely a process for that and uh, we're of course available to answer questions on that and help through that process um, and if that's something that council would like us to explore we could you know try to send out mailings to that particular area and uh, just to remind them that there's this program that exists, if that's something that would be desired. Okay, and if, um, when would, when would this be implemented? When would, when would we start this um, zone? So there are some um, improvements that need to be made. And so those would be um, when avenues 1-3, which is currently under construction, is completed and the streets are repaved and so we um, would, would not incur those costs um, at least related to the pavement so the spring is it the summer of, of 2021 yeah, the project the sewer project it's or the sewer and water replacement project is anticipated to be completed during the summer uh, okay the so there's work. plenty of time to kind of hear from the residents okay um that makes me feel better about it um and when we do the, um, are, will there be pavement markings to, to maximize the number of spaces? Like like downtown, there is a little hash marks. Is that intended to be uh, painted as part of this project? Um, it is not uh, because my understanding is that when you do put in those markings that um, actually fewer parking spaces are able to, are available um, that when left up to um, individuals to park that in unmarked spots, then they will make more spots. Okay. 
I would I would recommend that I walk that site today, and it's pretty well established, um, um, pretty evenly distanced. So um, I think we should get into habit when we can put those hash marks, just like they're downtown. It keeps one car from taking two spaces and people saving spaces. And I know in my neighborhood, people do that. And I, and I heard that happens also in other neighborhoods where one car will conveniently wedge themselves in between two spots so that they can save um, that spot for another. So um, I, I can support this, um, but I would like I would like those hash marks to, uh, to be applied. Or, or for you to come back and to look into it. But, but um, I, think, I think we need to start doing that in areas where it's pretty obvious if the, if the curb to curb is, I'm sorry, if from, um, from the curb, uh, curb ramp or corner or from the driveway approach, if there's 40 feet there, it should be marked for, for two, of, two parking spaces. Yeah, this is something that this is definitely something that we can look into on, on our end and, and determine how many spaces that we can achieve with the, the 20 foot lengths of uh, spacings, you know, for each markings. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Those are my questions. Thank you. Oh, uh, really yeah. So I think it's one thing to look into putting those space markings for this project. Uh, but I think what council member Medina is also articulating is the desire to do that more throughout the city. Uh, I know that the city's engineering staff did undertake a limited study on potentially putting in those markings. And what was shown is that uh, you actually reduce uh, the number of parking spaces. Uh, and it was an observation that, that happened um, uh, at night, counting the number of sort of cars that wedged in. Um, and so I think part, when we're talking about this topic at its core, what we're talking about is a, a disagreement with whether, with how many cars you actually benefit in one methodology over another methodology. Uh, and I, and uh, I'm, I, I think staff can go back uh, and look at that analysis, uh, but if our goal is to actually have more cars, um, one way is typically better uh, than the other. And what the analysis that, that the engineering staff did before, it was proven with that analysis that you actually get more cars on an average night basis without having the markings just because of people that wedge in. Now, an anecdotal observation, you can see, yes, people um, on a given day uh, probably taking up spaces, but if our goal is to increase the parking, uh, we uh, probably want to do a larger analysis and, and look at other cities as well. That's correct. And I also believe um, that there may be other regulations that start to apply. And then, of course, there will be the ongoing maintenance that's required, um, you know, not only this one time, but on a continuing basis um, if we do install the markings. So it's uh, something else to consider, but it is something that can be looked at. Next, uh, Council Member Mason, then we'll see Council Member Davis. Thank you. Um, so do the staff currently get permits to park in the area so that they they don't have any tickets from street sweeping otherwise? No, um, the staff does not have any permits. You know, they, they, they are parking um, their vehicles, you know, throughout the, the neighborhood whenever they get into work. Okay. And are they, are, are they ticketed? Is there any way for street sweepers, for example, to know that so that a vehicle is a staff vehicle because they're registered with the city versus a regular vehicle that's a member of, you know, just the community? So why don't I, I take that? We do not have any special provisions that allow staff not not to receive tickets. So if they violate uh, any parking regulations, uh, they they will get a ticket. Okay. So. Um, I think my, my concern around this particular item is uh, two, two big areas for, for me. One is that I was at the first meeting. Um, I attended the first meeting where this was raised um, and the, the residents in the community were not in favor of this permitting. Um, there's barely enough 
parking as it is for the individuals who live in the community. And while it's un understood that staff needs to park somewhere as well to serve the community, the residents of the community are already struggling to find parking. Um, and the requirement that they would have to be up by 5.59 a.m. to move their car for employees uh, isn't really that much of a, of a give in the way that it is presented, right, to say, well, anybody can park there between 4 and 6 a.m. Well, if you live there, you'd have to get up really early to, to move your car. Um, the second issue is that this uh, area around and the issue around east and west ticketing with the street sweepers, um, I think that's a big issue. I think uh, I'm a little concerned that this is, was brought to us before we had a full discussion around the ticketing that's been happening between the east and the west side of the city. And um, without addressing that, we're moving forward with identifying parking spaces specifically for our employees who are paid to come to work. Um, and it's not minimizing uh, it, the, our employee work effort, their work product, that they're committed to the city. But it is saying that if you live somewhere, you want to be able to park near where you live and you want to be able to sleep comfortably and not have to worry about pick, you know, getting up early to move your car, which is already an issue that we hear about all the time because of street sweeping. And so um, the fact that at that first public meeting, the second public meeting was the day after the biggest, probably the biggest election in U.S. history. Um, and my understanding was that there was no public comment made, but being that I was at the first one, being that I do recall how controversial this issue was, uh, and being that I do know how controversial the ticketing issue is, uh, I'd rather address that before we say, yes, we're gonna assign this entire street to parking or this entire area to parking for employees. What I would prefer as an alternative is that we do create a permit program where employees are not ticketed if they park in and around a community that might have street sweeping or for whatever reason they might go past the, the hour time requirement. Um, and that might be a, a balance. But for the equity issues that are there with our communities, I just can't support this at this time. So um, thank you. Okay, and, and I appreciate your comments, of course. Uh, again, we're not addressing street sweeping or ticketing on east or west or uh, within that area, primarily it's within in this uh, 200 block radius, just for clarity, um, so we're knowing. Uh, Council Member Davis. Thank you, Mayor Medina. Um, so there's there's several concerns I think that I that Marty tried to address as well. And I mean, I first of all, I understand the staffing issues with parking at that site. So for those of you who don't know and haven't heard tonight, it's it's probably um, you know it's probably like going to a you know Giants game in the parking lot and they're packing a bunch of cars into a spot and you go to you're the first one there and you're like, oh, can I get my key? That's in that car blocked up in the corner over there. Because that's what they're trying to do is they're they're stuffing a bunch of cars onto city stop lot, lot because they don't have the on-site parking for staff. So I get that, um, but I also get that there's a community that's lived in this neighborhood with limited parking. Um, and so I'm happy to see a couple of things. I'm happy to see that at least we're looking at increasing the number of parking spots by removing a number of red curb spots, um, adding parking to those spots on the on the west side of Huntington. So all that in front of our building, our property, makes sense to be permit parking. There's another little bit of red around on San Anselmo. Um, and so I guess I question why we can't take more advantage of San Anselmo. It's a pretty wide street, so has staff looked into even adding diagonal parking along San Anselmo in front of our property? not in front of a residential neighborhood. Um, adding permit parking, like, you know, we've heard already to a time frame that is definitely not really, I mean, there's really, who's gonna park there, right? Who's gonna get up at, you know, 4 a.m. to go move their vehicle to make sure they're gone for permit parking five days a week. Um, to add 40 spots that's permanent parking is a huge hit to that neighborhood. I mean, that is a huge hit to that neighborhood. You know, is, is 40 the number and, and how we came up with 40 when we were all, we had none of that out there. So can that number be reduced down to 20? Can it be reduced down to 25? Can we add additional diagonal parking on San Anselmo? Can we add, I, I noticed on Milton, if, if I'm correctly, the street behind the property, there's some curb uh, curbing. Is that curb 
uh, needed, do vehicles really exit from, and I would doubt it, that they actually exit onto Milton large vehicles at that back gate. Can we put a curb in there? Can we add more parking there? I mean, what can we do to, with the least minimal impact to that neighborhood? So I, I, I'm I would be concerned in hearing back on some alternative options. And just for clarification, council member, you said San Anselmo. Are you referring to San Antonio? Sorry, I had San Anselmo. Yes, San Antonio. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any staff have comment or wish to address anything? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, I think it's San Felipe, uh, Laura. I think you were referring to the property that borders the courtyard, and that's San Felipe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do not know if diagonal parking well was looked into, and, and let's toss that to Director Tan. Yeah, we didn't look into any diagonal parking spaces, but the only thing is with diagonal parking spaces, it does require a lot more, you know, area, right? Because the cars are at an angle, and um, and then the vehicle travel lanes would have to be shifted in order to uh, do that. So right now, there's only one, you know, vehicle travel lane in each, you know, direction, and the diagonal parking spaces would definitely alter you know the um you know the roadway the vehicle travel lanes and i don't think there's just by looking at the google street view maps right now as we were talking earlier council member davis i just don't think there's enough width to install any um diagonal parking spaces along san fleet or even san antonio uh, at this um at this moment um unless we ended up creating maybe one-way streets or something like that and which will allow um additional you know diagonal parking spaces can be installed right in, in those areas um but you know dennis uh, Maj, our deputy director is here he can he can also chime in on you know what is going on at the, in, in, in the city and why we need 40 spaces and um you know at, that we're requesting good evening council <clears throat> dennis Bosch, your deputy director so <clears throat> what i want to explain to you is a situation that has actually gotten worse uh, since uh, the last time or the first time it was brought to the TSPC. We're basically at the situation now where um, the 40 employees, which also match the, the 40 spots, almost all of them are parking inside the, the corporation yard now, which basically uh, from, a, from an expeditious um, service delivery has really impacted and slowed things. And it's very simple. When you have a bunch of trucks or cars inside the courtyard, we have to move the trucks to get the city trucks out of the way or to load them or to get the backhoes to load the trucks or to get at the pipes. And so um, it's the only city facility where the employees do not have a dedicated um, parking lot. Um, and there's just there's just nowhere else to put the cars. Um, in my time for the corporation yard and, and for the 30 years of my service, the area used to be a, a no man's land. You could drive up and there was hardly any cars there. Um, what I've seen now uh, basically is cars that are from contractors and you see them, they drive up, they jump out, someone else gets in the, gets in the trailer or uh, sometimes a motor home. And uh, Councilman Medina, if you, you said you walked to today, if you noticed there was one car, one truck with a trailer and there was a motor home, um, these vehicles, these vehicles are, are from some other place and you know we 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 know our neighbors down there and we know their cars and um some of the comments i've heard tonight basically and if you look at the map we're asking for the spaces along the west side of the courtyard and on the east side of the courtyard and then a little bit farther down which is just uh, east or across of the the houses to the north of the courtyard on the west side so when I when I hear the comments, what's what's going to happen, and, and it's not going to be 100 percent, but when you when you when we have hypothetically this permit parking, and we've seen it now with with some positive effects of the street sweeping, we're able to sweep it now and keep it cleaner. But these larger vehicles that are kept there for multiple days are unable to do that as much now. And it's my belief, and from what I've seen, is that if we were to have this permit parking, those large vehicles will not be able to be in that exact area and because they're larger they won't be able they won't be able to just park on the west side in front of the other houses which are the to the to the to the north end of the courtyard because the because of the driveways they're just not enough length right so it, 
it's my belief that when if we were to go with this program that those vehicles will not be there and then it will then it will then create create spaces for the the residents that live just to the north of the courtyard or in some of the um, multi-unit buildings it, I, it's my belief that it will create that it's and, and I believe that because when I've seen what what has been the the change from the from the street sweeping is that the the large vehicles aren't coming back as quickly so i don't know where they're bringing them um i drive by the courtyard obviously every single day and up and down huntington and um they're gone someplace and even with the even with the the uh, footprint of the construction that's going on to huntington which is is which is a, a pretty long length um a lot of the a lot of the repeat def, uh, offenders that I would call them have gone. So um, you know it's it's not a, a something I could put my my finger on a hundred percent you know from a percentage standpoint, but I've already seen some 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 positives to it, and I do believe that you know with the employees that come to work and then they they obviously go home at the end of the day, it's it, it creates a um, it, it, it creates a. Um, an opening of units and, 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 and vehicles can't, can't loiter as long. So um, just to recap, I mean, we've got the, we've got the vehicles in the yard. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm constantly worried about damage to the private vehicles. I'm constantly worried about the efficiency of trying to deliver the services. Um, and, you know, with the relationships that I have uh, through other, you know, deputy directors and other public works in, um, in, in the county, um, unless you have a super duper big yard, employee employee uh, vehicles are from a risk standpoint are not parked on private private utility um, locations switch screens uh, real quick and then councilmember Medina has his hand up um, is uh, the red areas on the east and the west side how many additional spaces does that add? So if there's 40 that your goal is, how many does that add by opening those? So how many are you adding on the west and the east side that are red that will become parking spots? I believe that was eight spots. I'm sorry? Eight spots. Eight, okay. All right, so in essence, we're kind of uh, there's 32 so really it's not truly 40 because you're adding eight so you're trying to come up with an additional 32 that, that don't exist today okay uh, any uh, were there other questions can can the additional red spaces on San Felipe I got the street name be removed and added and, and pull some of the off of um, Huntington over to in front of there. I mean, it's, the, the other thing I, I will say, it, it's it's one of the weirdest streets in San Bruno because you come off all these narrow streets or regular streets, and then for some reason, San Felipe just opens up much wider. It's like an old neighborhood next to a, well, an older neighborhood next to a little bit of a newer neighborhood because there's a little bit more of a distance on that the width of that street versus many others in that area. That's why I asked about the diagonal parking. Yeah, the, the red curve adjacent to the um, the parking, the, the courtyard um, on South Fleet, that cannot be removed. And there were some truck uh, turning movements that were recently uh, conducted in that, you know, from Huntington southbound towards San Fleet, you know, uh, west. Um, that area needs to be red zone in order to or the truck to be able to move uh, or to turn at that through that intersection. Other questions of staff? Chair, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I had the same question about how many of the spots were net new, and uh, it, it looks like uh, we're not adding a dramatic number of new spots. And so, uh, I was thinking, you know, why don't we just split the baby and let only the new spots be um, reserved? But it doesn't sound like that would nearly address it. But could we, uh, in addition to those, maybe start with? Um, you know, freeing up just one side of the street to minimize the impact and that way we do get some dedicated uh, employee parking and uh, and leave the rest uh, available to, to the residents and it'll still be first come first serve but maybe if we can get some of the cars out of the 
the courtyard, uh, it might alleviate some of the problem. I mean, it sounds like we're going to do the uh, the roadway expansion anyway. So, I mean, really the question here is not so much about creating the spots. It's really about, do we do a permit? And um, so if we could limit that, see what the impact is. And then if um, things seem like they're uh, a little bit better, uh, we leave things alone. If we still need to keep expanding, then we look at taking a few more away and just see what that does to the neighborhood. Uh, you know, another concern too is that right now not everybody's going to work, and if if people are, you know, because of the pandemic, spending more time at home and not moving their cars as, as often, this this has that much more of an impact on it. I don't know that uh, you know by this summer things are going to be dramatically better. They might be. I hope they are, but uh, we just don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I know the question came up about uh, can staff have parking. Or are they identified as a vehicle so that they wouldn't be ticketed for street sweeping? Well, it is what it is, right? The the reason we have that is so all cars move for a good uh, process through it. And I don't know how some community members, I know, if I parked in front of the yellow zone as a city employee when I did, guess what? I got a ticket in my car and I was doing city business. And you know why? Because I shouldn't have been in the yellow zone. So I don't know that it's fair to say, okay, employees, you can park where, you, where you're not supposed to, and the residents are trying to figure out because they don't know it's an employee car. Um, and I think that, that causes more of a challenge too. Um, I know there's areas across the street in the wood slatted area. I know in the, and I'm gonna go way back, forget even when, that used to be more open, but I think that has been a long time since that's been available for any usage other than material or other uh, storage items for the corporation yard, if I'm correct. Um, I was looking on San Felipe, and I don't see that because of the turn radius and site visibility that I don't know how you take away uh, red there. And I do agree, you know, that was something that some people in this community thought was very important to have street sweeping on Huntington. So it's there, and I think it helps uh, move the traffic. As I've, uh, I, as I've said in my neighborhood, if you just, like when, when we had the, the time where we suspended street sweeping, there were cars that didn't move for a month, period. But I have street sweeping. So, you know, I, I saw it, and now at least I know they're going to move twice a month uh, if, if they do stay there. I think there's some, there's some help to have um, vehicles move, and it, it is obviously being utilized not by residents, but probably by contractors, and as uh, Mr. Bosch said, and as Mr. Medina saw today. So, I think there's. it's important that staff have uh, parking. I know they do at the Parks Corporation Yard. I know they do at City Hall, um, you know, which means also fire can park there, personnel, library can park there. So, you know, I, I think there's something that we need to do and, and just to say good luck. And when they come in to report to work and it's like, I couldn't find a parking spot and it's street sweeping, I'm sure that goes over for I don't know how long and, and you know, just doesn't help the efficiencies and the effectiveness. Cars parking in the uh, in the lot, I think, it can be uh, a challenge. I think not only is you know, my question would be, I'm not going to ask it for a response now, but let's just say a city vehicle hits the the employee's car, who's liable? I bet you we're going to get a claim. So uh, I think there's a lot of variables that we need to address. And, uh, no, I don't know that that really helps. Uh, assist the employees who you do want to be able to have them have a place to park and get to work um, uh, during storms, during emergencies, uh, during the business week if they're called in during that period of time. Uh, Council Member Medina, you have your hand up. Yes. Um, hey, this is a good discussion. Um, so if I understand right, we wouldn't implement the, the permitted parking until summer possibly but we could remove the red curb now and and grind away the um, the markings there for the west side where it, adjacent to our building to free up those eight spots. And we have a couple of questions we, we raised and we could kind of look into it with a little bit more uh, research and uh, we can uh, get on with this meeting. To the mayor. When we have time. City manager. Sure. I can't can't figure out how to raise my, my, my hands tonight. That's all right. 
So uh, Council Member Medina just uh, touched on one potential uh, compromise uh, for tonight. Uh, what I wanted to proffer to the City Council was just that, uh, that the City Council authorized moving forward with the elimination of all of the uh, red curb that will create you know, additional spaces, as well as the uh, permit parking zone in front of the city's courtyard, both on the east and west side. And at this point, do not proceed uh, further north in front of the homes on Huntington, period, as well as uh, staff could go back and look at the potential for diagonal crossing on San Felipe. Um, I'm not a traffic engineer, uh, but there may be the potential to remove the sidewalk on the north side of Huntington that of course will have other impacts um, to create that diagonal parking and maybe the traffic engineers will say that uh, there's potentially an ADA reason why we don't wanna do that, but we can go back and look at that. But in order to provide additional staff parking, uh, what I wanted to again proffer is authorize staff one to remove to move forward for, to move forward with removing the red curb so we create those additional spaces as well as authorize the employee permit parking in front of the courtyard on the east and west side of Huntington as well as on uh, the, the San Felipe side in front of the courtyard. Thank you, city manager. Traffic engineers uh, can do the map. Uh, how many spaces would that generate approximately? Okay, thank you. Uh, you've heard the city manager as a possible way uh, to uh, bring some assistance down there and then have uh, more to be looked at for later. Um, what are your thoughts, Vice Mayor? Uh, so I, I don't think the resolution that we have in front of us addresses uh, removal of any red zones at all. It's really just establishing the program. So I, mean, I think that's really the only action. So if we wanted to limit uh, what that would affect, uh, I, I would be in favor of, of limiting it. And it's, it's kind of what, what I proposed before, that we uh, just reduce the, the expanse of it, see how much it helps, and then uh, look at uh, you know, what we can do to, to expand it later if it's still necessary. Um, it'd be nice if at some point we could uh, take over the old Caltrain lot and use that for uh, additional employee parking or, um, you know, make some use of that. It's pretty much just a empty storage yard right now. Councilman Medina, thoughts? Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate that, that, um, that still the zone wouldn't go into effect until the summer. So I think um, the quickest thing to do would be to remove the red curb and um, we'll, we'll come back to this issue after some additional um, research is done. So um, I, I, I don't wanna go as far as to establish the, the, the zone yet. I just think we should take the first step in, in getting rid of the red and provide those parking spaces based on the schedule of implementation that staff told us that it won't happen till till summer summer so why do that now and when it's not going to happen so we'll come back to it councilman mason um I echo, I was going to say, I, I echo what Council Member Salazar mentioned that at some point it would be great to get the Caltrain location. Um, I also just wanted to ask the deputy, um, how many how many employees bring their cars to this location a day? Well, we have the, the 40, uh, and for fully all positions, 40, 41, um, I'd say basically on any one particular day, you're probably short. Uh, you know, someone, had, a couple people have a day off, maybe someone's sick. So you're probably down maybe four or five cars. Okay. Um, so maybe, you know, approximately 35. Okay. And, and um, cause I'm looking at the map. Um, I saw the staff report, but I'm looking at the aerial map. It, do they really not fit? I mean, in the corporate yard, could, cause when I would, I would imagine, at least as I've seen it in other agencies, when you come in with your car, 
you double park your car, you take out your truck, and you park your employee car where the truck was. And so I'm just wondering if the money might be better spent making a clear parking line, parking configurations, because I'm surprised they don't fit in the yard that's there right now. But from what I see, there's really not a clear delineation of some of where the parking spaces start and end. You know, uh, I, hold on, Deputy um, Director. I'm only going to say because he, he may have a bias answer. Um, I will tell you, for someone who walked through the uh, Public Works Corporation yard uh, this month and uh, went at a time where the city vehicles were in and the personal vehicles were also in, um, there is no room. Not, not safely. Uh, and they were bottlenecked behind each other. And so an employee had to wait for this other employee to come out in order to get their personal car out. So I don't think the efficiency is well to say, okay, you know, park your car on the street, somehow double park, bring the city vehicle out, bring your car in either. So just for, I will just say what I witnessed uh, at the end of the business day at the corporation yard. Uh, the deputy director, you can go ahead and respond. Yeah, you, you hit it perfectly. And, and someone's normal truck isn't the same size, obviously, as some of our bigger trucks. I mean, our vacuum truck is, uh, you know, they're between 35 and 40 feet long. So we're actually maneuvering these trucks, uh, the large trucks, around the city smaller trucks and around uh, the employees' private vehicles. And it's, it's, it's to a point where um, it's, it's good that our guys are, are very good drivers. I'm proud of our guys. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I hear you, but I, I don't think, I mean, I don't know how, you're, how long you're waiting or how long the cars are being blocked, but I've seen it in a lot of yards where there is a wait. You wait for the person to move their car. The lot is there. I mean, if there could be a configuration of the large to, to the yard, again, to depict some more clear parking spaces, I would also be curious because Mayor Medina brought it up is do we have claims that we should be worried about in these cars? Um, but I'm just, I think taking away spaces from the residential community when, you know, there, there is space in the yard and it might be somewhat of an inconvenience, um, but that might be better planned out in, in a way um, is just, it, it really is going to impact the neighborhood. And that's, that's really my greatest concern. Councilmember Davis. I would think that there's other vehicles outside of city vehicles that are coming into the lot. You might have um, contractors that are coming in, dumping off material, picking up material because you are a courtyard. So I think, you know, employee vehicles parked in there is kind of dangerous if it's not a certain specific designated area. So I totally get where you're coming from. I mean, really, this is a long overdue issue. I've heard complaints for years. I know a lot of employees work for the city and the challenge that you've all had. So I totally get that. And I'm on board with providing some of that, that parking outside of the corporate. And I definitely think it's needed. I think that the number though, if 40 um, is a questionable thing. And that is, we know that you can park some vehicles inside, maybe it's supervisors. We know that some people take their vehicles home. And so they're not bringing um, a personal vehicle there. They're actually drive, driving a work vehicle. So, I just like to see us get down to a smaller number. And so I like the recommendation earlier where we just limit the um, permit parking to, you know, outside of um, our particular property um, on Huntington. And so maybe we can move forward with something. And like Marty said, come back and revisit this again later in the summer. Okay. Uh, I think we did uh, dialogue that is still under a consent item. The current resolution did go into much more detail. The city manager brought up a consideration to remove red uh, and to only have it on the east and west side of Huntington that is on uh, that is in front of the property that is utilized by Public Works or in front of Public Works, should we say, on the Huntington side for now. Look into other elements or questions that have been raised um, by Councilman Member Davis that even said, you know, how many vehicles are people driving in? maybe not take a car space, et cetera. Um, so what's the desire of council? I'll make a motion to approve this resolution with the uh, changes that reduce the number of spaces that would be taken away. 
okay. Uh, and I, don't, I, I wish I knew the exact number of spaces, but uh, we'll, we'll just designate that, that area that is immediately in front of the, uh, of the courtyard. On Huntington, east and west. East and west, on Okay. And then uh, as, as also uh, uh, city manager, also is in, that, in this resolution, will it also take care of the eight spots that were brought up earlier or no? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll toss it to uh, Hey Juan Ritchie. Uh, I will also address uh, really quickly the comment about the Caltrans lot. Know that the city has reached out to Cal, uh, Caltrain numer on numerous occasions attempting to lease that lot and have been told no, and they, they have their own uh, uses of that lot and uh, do not wish to entertain a lease to the city. Hey Juan, will you address the question? Um, yes, I was just looking at the resolution. I think it can be um, updated to be clear that there's um, adoption of removing that red, the red zones that are currently on Huntington. And so I think in combination with um, those red curb removals and keeping in front of the courtyard on East West, I think um, the resolution could be amended. Okay. Uh, Vice, Vice Mayor, just want to be clear, were you just for the parking or is it for the eight spots too? or? Uh, yeah, and I, I think you know, getting rid of getting rid of the red zone is is important. That's going to be a, a major portion of this. Is added, that's what's really going to add some parking to it. But the way the resolution is written right now, the the part that says therefore be it resolved needs to include in that particular language. And so if it's modified, then uh, I, I will support that as well. In your motion, okay. In my motion. All right, so that would be the removal of the red and the east and west side of Huntington for the uh, the spots only. Uh, is there a second to that? I'll second that. Okay, and then on the question, the only thing I was going to say too is it did go before our TSPC and has had some dialogue, and I know they supported it in a in a more broader perspective, and I think we've brought it uh, down further. So uh, with that, uh, we have a uh, motion and a second to approve that. Uh, with those uh, changes to the resolution, uh, City Clerk, roll call, please. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Mason? No. Councilmember Medina? No. Vice Mayor Salazar? Aye. Mayor Medina? Aye. Motion carries three to zero. Okay, and thank you. And of course, there was uh, other discussions by council uh, to come back with other elements from hash marks to uh, assessing and then seeing if it can be broadened or if that suffices.